also for experiments um i think experiment 10. so what we are trying to do is to determine the specific heat capacity of the liquid using the cooling method so there are many different methods that they can use but in this instance it is the cooling method that they decide to use so I think that's the first thing that you should note that we are determining the specific heat capacity using the cooling method now they ensure something that's where they start they record the room temperature so that's because the room temperature is very crucial for this particular experiment as they are they are um, later you find out that they are trying to use newton's law of cooling which is this particular law that they have written here although they didn't tell us that is newton's law of cooling that they are using but this statement here is a statement of newton's law of cooling so another thing you should notice is that they made sure um, they have the same amount of liquid in the two calorimeters because they are using two separate because look at that so it's like you should weigh the two calorimeters so they have one calorimeter then they have another calorimeter and they make sure that the contents of the two calorimeters are exactly the same thing so that means it's the same thing is the same amount of water that they put in the first calorimeter that's the same amount of liquid that they are going to put inside the second calorimeter that's why they said it here that the two liquids in the calorimeter are nearly equal in volume so they try as much as possible to make everything to look the same then we are going to have uh, okay so they say we heat them to a temperature of 90 degrees celsius then after they start cooling we, re we, re we measure the temperature after um, 30 seconds of interval then what again temperature of the two liquids with time temperatures okay so we measure it after every 30 seconds until the two liquids have a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius above the room temperature look at that that's why it is necessary for you to record what the room temperature is going to be so and they make sure that there is a reason that they are stopping at a temperature greater than the temperature of the room because if you have two bodies and they are at different temperatures it is going to flow from the body with high temperature to the body with low temperature so that's why they make sure that um, the two calorimeters they are having temperature that is greater than that of the room so that their temperature the heat will flow from these two calorimeters to the environment because they are having higher temperatures but if you stop at a temperature that is lower than the temperature of the room then the the content of the calorimeter is going to be absorbing heat from the room because the heat uh, the room is what at a higher temperature so that means that the heat will flow from the room into the two calorimeters which is something that is going to cause error for us so that's why you make sure that both your starting and stopping temperatures are temperatures that are above the room temperature so that's what that's why they said you should stop at 20 degrees celsius above the room temperature and when will you know when you are 20 degrees celsius above the room temperature that's why you have to also record the room temperature from the beginning so record your observations in tabular form that's what the value of the temperature against time that's what you are recording then the two kilometers and their content weigh the two kilometers and their content so that means we want to know the mass and i said in a forced convention what i mean by forced convention is that we are the ones that are forcing heat to flow from these two um, calorimeters to the environment because we make sure that they have a higher temperature than that of the environment so the rate of heat loss of a calorimeter this is how you get the rate of heat loss of a calorimeter the rate of heat loss is just the heat the quantity of heat divided by time and you can get it also by using this um, other part you can get it from using this part so that means you just uh, find heat don't forget that if you want to calculate quantity of heat quantity of heat is m change in temperature where m is what the heat capacity you know there are 
there are actually two formulas you can use q is mc change in theta for this mc no this c is the specific its capacity then this mc is what is what you can short as h which is what the heat capacity but in this case they are using it as capital letter m they are not using it as h so that means that instead of having change in q over change in time so you replace um change in q with h change in time so you are going to have h sorry h change in theta over change in time now they didn't write their own as h they wrote it as m so we are writing it this way that change in q change in t is equal to m change in theta change in t so you now use this formula to get what you want and how are you going to go about it how you are going to go about it is by using newton's cooling law so newton's cooling law states that the rate of heat loss of a body is proportional to the temperature difference between the uh, the temperature of the body and that of the environment so that means that your the theta sorry your the q the t is proportional to the difference in temperature of that body and that of the surrounding so you know you know from the beginning we make sure that the two guys are actually almost equal we make sure that they they have the same temperature we started with the same temperature we started with the same volume we ended with the same temperature so that means that the two kilometers are exactly identical so that means that their rates of heat loss are going to be the same thing they are going to have equal rates of heat loss so this is the rate of temperature for so you equate the rate of temperature for of the water to the rate of temperature for of the liquid and from that formula you will be able to determine what the specific heat capacity of that liquid is going to be so you just have to find this m you know your m I just you know you said is the heat capacity so it's going to be mc so that means that you find this m by the time you know if you do this for the calorimeter that contain the liquid then you do it for the calorimeter that contain the water so let's say you want to do it for the calorimeter that contain the liquid that will be mass of the calorimeter specific capacity of the calorimeter plus mass of the liquid specific is capacity of the liquid that's all we are going to have then you multiply it by what the difference the change in temperature over change in time it should be equal to that's the rate of heat loss for the calorimeter that contain the liquid you do the same thing for the calorimeter that contain water so that will be mass of calorimeter specific capacity of calorimeter plus mass of the water specific capacity of water then change in temperature over change in time if you look at this we from everything we said we said that they undergo they under they are going to undergo the same um drop in temperature right so that means that this change in theta is equal for both of them so that means we don't need change in theta in our final answer as long as the change in temperatures are the same so what are we going to be left with we are only going to be left with change in time so that's why when you plot the graph in the graph they said you should take the value of t t1 and t2 which are what the time taken by the liquid and water to cool through the same temperature because the same temperatures are the same that's why we removed change in theta from here so this t is the time that it took this first calorimeter that contained the liquid to cool from one temperature to another temperature and this t other t that is here is the time it takes for the second calorimeter that contain water to cool from that between those two ranges of temperature also that's why they made an example here that from 75 to 45 degrees celsius so you can use any temperature that you like you can say maybe they cool from 60 degrees celsius to maybe 40 degrees celsius but you maintain the same temperature difference also for the second calorimeter so that's what you are going to do so you now equate you equate the two of them and that's why they say if you wait you already know the mass of the content of the calorimeter sorry mass of the calorimeter the specific value of calorimeter is usually copper calorimeter which is 400 then mass of the liquid 
you are looking for specific characteristics of the lipid and you already know the change in time so the change in time is what the time it takes for the first liquid the, this change in time now will be the time it takes for the liquid to cool from 60 to 40 that's why they ask you to plot graph that's the essence of plotting the graph because you are plotting graph for the temperature the temperature against time so the temperature is going to be falling with time let's say this for the first liquid then this for water so you're going to have different temperatures so what do you do so you come here you say maybe this is 20 degrees celsius if it's 20 and 40 you want to use you come here 40 degrees so you trace it to the first graph measure the know the time right so it trace 20 degrees celsius also you should meet it somewhere so know the time so this is your what t1 this is your t2 for which liquid for water let's say this red graph is for water and this white graph is for the unknown liquid then what do you do again this same 40 degrees celsius you trace it to the graph of the liquid trace it down this will be your t1 for the liquid this same 20 degrees Celsius, trace it to the graph of the liquid, trace it down. This will be your T2 for the liquid. So look at that. So you now do T2 minus T1. Don't forget that the white, um, the the white one is for the liquid, right? And the white one we have T2 minus T1. So this value is what you come and use here for the liquid. While for water is the red one which I wrote in white. That is for water. So come and do T2 minus T1 and that's all. So that's what you now come and put inside this formula for changing T for changing T. And what's the only unknown that you are looking for? The only left is what the specific is capacity of the liquid, which is very easy. Once you substitute all the other values, then you are going to have that value that you are looking for. So this experiment is actually something that is not that hard. So look at that. Look at what they come and do here. They said change the temperature of the liquid this is changing temperature of the water so although this what they equated here is not something that is supposed to equate oh sorry here yeah. it's not something that is supposed to equate the change in temperature over change in time of the water is not changing temperature over change in time of the liquid what they actually want to write here is changing heat if it's changing heat over change in time of water equal to change in heat over change in time of liquid that's going to be very correct so i'm assuming this is um, a type a typo error from their side because it's exactly the same thing that i have done here but it is what changing heat not changing temperature because it is the rate of each loss that you are going to have to be equal for both of them so that's it for this particular um, experiment